In crypto, every cycle, we have massive narratives, probably the biggest and well-known narrative right now, aside from just all of DeFi, right? And aside from layer twos is the idea of decentralized gaming because gamers already are trading in and out of skins. They're already using tokenized ecosystems. Well, they're not tokenized yet. The idea is that they will be tokenized shortly. The last crypto cycle, we had Gala Games absolutely rip. It went crazy, it became a market cap up at $5 billion, an ecosystem that was just hosting different decentralized gaming uh, games that you could literally just earn money while playing them. We also had Axie Infinity, AXS, I believe the ticker symbol is there. Axie Infinity is something that I had put a bunch of money into as well, pro around the top, unfortunately. So I ended up getting rug pulled. It felt like I lost a ton of money on it. But nonetheless, it became a huge narrative. This next cycle, so many eyes are on the decentralized gaming space. Yet, I don't think that we really have found a clear winner yet. I don't think Gala Games is going to be that winner, and I know Axie Infinity is not that winner. Because games come in and out of style very, very common. Like, very frequently. Yeah, exactly. Duck says CSGO. CSGO has been one of those games that has stayed in the, the center, in the attention sphere, for probably the longest amount of time. That and, like, GTA 6 or Call of Duty. But aside from those main mega games, most of the time you see a cycle, like you saw Clash of Clans come in and out, you saw Angry Birds come in and out, I don't play games all that much so I don't know a ton of games, but they are not ones that stay common. So in my opinion, the winner of the decentralized gaming sphere is going to be a platform that can host these games. Rather than just one gaming ecosystem by itself, a platform that has a hundred games on top of it. And so I've compiled three cryptocurrencies here that fit that profile. Today, we're gonna go over all three of them, their market caps and their tokenomics. I'm not going to play any of the gaming. We're gonna save that for a later video. So let's get right into it. The first one on this list for me is Nakamoto Games. The coin name is NAKA. -A. Nakamoto Games is sitting at $134 million market cap with about 45% of the coins in circulation. I'm actually a big fan of this and pretty much all of 2023 it has been running up. So it was down chilling just under a dollar to start the year off at 70 cents, 80 cents. And right now to start 2024 off at, it's at a dollar and 70. So it's done relatively well, but it's still extremely small in the grand scheme of things. Remember, Gala Games last cycle got to a $5 billion market cap. Axie Infinity, which was just one game, got to a $10 billion market cap. So sitting at $134 million, there's definitely a lot of upside on this one protocol. If you come over to their Twitter, um, you'll see that they have 176,000 followers. So there is a fairly large community behind this this uh, gaming platform, Nakamoto Games. And one of the most intriguing things for me personally is that they have literally just made history in which they're releasing the first gameplay of their Nakaverse, which is kind of like their version of the metaverse, but it's just a play on words in my opinion, on Unreal Engine 5. So they're taking this extremely serious. Most of the, the gaming cryptos are not on, not inter, intertwining with Unreal Engine 5. So they, like, they want the experience to be key. And again, in the gaming, because everything comes and goes so much, you need the experience, the user experience, to be as seamless as possible and as clean as possible. Because if it's really clunky, people are probably not gonna play it. Like if it lags a lot, if it just doesn't look cool, nobody's gonna play it. There's so many other games out there. Most people are not playing these games to make money. Most of like the, the main Web 2 audience, that is. Web 3 audience is obviously just doing this to make money, but you need to make sure that they have clean gameplay. And I think that using Unreal Engine 5 absolutely makes that a reality. You'll also see there's a lot of partnerships that Nakamoto Games has had in the past and continue to make. If you come over to their website, you'll see that they have a platform with many, many games on it. Like I said at least six times so far in this video, they cycle in and out of games all the time. So having a platform which you can host different games on is going to be key for any of these protocols to succeed in. I also saw on an article that there's about 17,000 holders of the token. Although, no, not an article. I saw it here, 17,131 holders of Naka. 
So that's that's awesome. That is both speculators and game players. We want as many holders as possible. I'm one says duck. Let's go duck. Let's go. <laughs> Hopefully you're making some some decent money on it. Jambo has Naka as well. I might have to buy some Naka after this. Truthfully, this was my favorite. I shouldn't have started off with a banger, but I'm I got to start off with a banger. So 17,131 holders, about to be 132 after I make this video. We need to go through the tokenomics though, because in order to actually understand how a coin is going to appreciate or how there is any value within the coin, you have to understand the tokenomics. If there's an infinite supply of something and every day it gets inflated by 10%, that's not something you wanna to toss your money into. So while the tokenomics often get swept underneath the rug, and I would agree that in the most part, tokenomics are less important than actual gameplay. We still are gonna go through it. We're gonna go through and play the games at a different point in time. So you can see the initial sale of tokens. You can see the, the angel, the seed round, the private round one and two had a total of 55 million coins. In total, all of the tokens come to 180 million tokens, right? So it gives you an idea of where they're capped out supply at. And then you can come through and kind of scroll and see all of the different lockup periods that they have, the private rounds, the lockups for um, the IDO and everything, and then how many coins initially were released from all of these sales. So that was 5.7 million. If you go back to the Etherscan, you can see that, is it the Etherscan? No, if you come to coin market cap, you can see that about 80 million of them are currently in circulating supply. So there's still 100 million left to go to get to fully diluted supply, but that means that we're around the halfway point. That's not that crazy, especially when you compare it to the other two games on this list or gaming platforms on this list. Being some, I, ideally we would be above the 50% mark for uh, uh, total supply in circulation, but beggars can't be choosers, and we just have to just wait and see how it goes for that. I will definitely be linking all of these resources in, I'll probably put it in the chat as soon as I'm done talking about it all, as soon as we're done with the recording, so you guys can all check it out, and we'll discuss it in more depth um, in a moment. But it's good, it's good to pay attention to this. The next one up on this list is Games for a Living. I really am a fan of this this name, and truthfully, GFL, Games for a Living, the whole reason I even looked into it to begin with is because of the name. I think that's really cool, and it has potential to catch on with people. Unfortunately, only 14% of the coins are in circulation. Like I said, 44% is sub-ideal, but it's better than the 14.5%, right? They do have a max supply of 10 billion coins, but only one5 are currently in circulation with the market cap of $56 million. The reason I don't look at this fully diluted market cap, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have been paying attention to right now, is because this market cap has no impact on price. What impacts the price is how many are in circulation, how many can be traded, bought, and sold, right? If all of the coins are locked up, and only one is on the market to be bought or sold, that's gonna impact the price significantly more than the coins that are not in circulation. So I only look at circulating market cap, and then I look at how the rest of these coins are going to get into circulation, which kind of leads us into the tokenomics for GFAL, GFAL. This, this right here. So from launch, they launch with a set amount of coins, and then you rapidly increase how many coins are in circulation. So I believe that uh, Games for a Living has only been out for about eight months, eight or nine months. So we're sitting at that 1.5 billion coins in circulation. If we kind of extrapolate out to 2025, which would be around like 30 months from here, you would be sitting around 6 billion coins in circulation. So there is an excessive amount of dilution that is going to come in this project. You just have to hope or speculate that the adoption or the games are going to outpace how many coins get issued into the market, right? You can see the breakdown here. A lot of the coins for this went to private sales or public sales or the team, which again is not something I'm a huge fan of. I'm just, I'm just not. There's a good amount for the foundation, some for the reserve, some for marketing, and then a decent chunk, 15%, for the in-game ecosystem. The private sale, all the charts are here, so you can pay attention to it. We just 
the main thing I wanted to bring to attention here is that it's going to go from 1.5 billion coins in circulation all the way up to about 6 billion by the end of 2025. And I know you guys understand why I'm paying attention to 2025, so I don't even need to explain that, but I will mention that that is historically where the next cycle would be peaking out at, right? Every four years, we see a top in Bitcoin. This has been playing out for the last 15 years, and that lines up with end of 2025. So that's where a lot of my speculation, a lot of my price analysis gets to. Like I said, you're hoping that the adoption of GFAL, of the token, is outpacing the dilution that comes of the issuance of these coins. So in order to see and project if the adoption will outpace, you have to go look at the community behind each coin. And if you come look at their Twitter, their X, you will see that they're close to 60,000 followers and they're very constantly tweeting. They're constantly expressing themselves on social media, which is good. You'll even see that they put together a thread outlining what happened in 2023, in which they said that the community grew to over 15,000 token holders which is a very strong community, especially when you compare to the fact that there are 17,000 token holders for Naka, it, it puts it into perspective because GFAL is sitting at like one third of the market cap as Nakamoto Games. I was a little bit disappointed when I joined their Discord though. They have a lot of members here. They have 17,000 members, so just about as many members as token holders, but it's not really active. It's just not. So today, you can see that there's really only been a handful of, of um, messages sent back and forth in the general chat. So I'd like to see a stronger community, but given how small of a project it is, I understand that they don't have the most active community there. As far as games on the platform, there's really only four. There's only a handful of these games. So we'll, we'll play these games together in a different uh classroom. I'm going to put quotes around that because it's really just going to be us gaming together. But they only they only have four games, so literally nothing compared to the no, the amount of games that Naka has. Next up on this list, the third and final game or gaming platform that we're going to talk about is Lit Labs. So Lit Labs has an 11 million dollar market cap. It's 10.9 million. So it is minuscule absolutely a tiny, tiny project. It's got 9.7% of the coins in circulation with a max supply of 3 billion. So there is probably gonna be an aggressive amount of dilution that comes. Hell yeah, hell yeah, Jambo. Probably a lot of dilution that comes. When I went through to check out their community and everything, I saw that their Discord has 31,000 members in it, which is kind of what sparked my like curiosity in it because that's a lot of members for such a small project a lot of members for such a small project it's very much so a, a dead community though there's not a lot of people talking in here for having 30 something thousand members in a discord right this is like our discord here those investors we have 205 members and our general chat pops off way more than this so it's like not the strongest thing there. And literally one of the comments is from my alt accounts because I needed to I needed to solidify that I was a human, not a bot. It is one of the best. Prince Vegeta, you are dead on. Those investors is the best Discord that is in existence. Uh, going, th going through a lot more of their Discord, it's just not super active. Their X account is kind of active. They consistently are just bragging about different partnerships that they have, which is cool. It's good for us. We get to see the different progression that they have. So in, in December, they made a lot of cool partnerships like this one with Chain GPT, which is the number one ranked AI infrastructure for blockchain, crypto, and Web3. So that's kind of extremely fascinating, actually. Lit Labs also was just acquired by Elixir Games. Elixir Games is aiming to be the Steam of decentralized gaming. So they're trying to get as many games as possible in there. Lit Labs is the coin that's going to be used across all of their games. How many games you might ask? Well, currently speaking, it's just one. It's brand new, guys, it's brand new. So currently speaking, it's just the one game, but their idea is to create an ecosystem just like the other two. Again, I said all three of these are platforms to host games on. And then Lit Labs was just 
acquired by Elixir Gaming. Elixir Gaming looks pretty promising, but it's even smaller than of a community than all the others. It just looks like it's more of an authentic and real community, whereas Lit Labs kind of looks like they botted some of their followers, which a lot of people think you can do that, but you just can't. Did you take attendance yet? Sneaking into the back of the class. <laughs> I did take attendance. You'll be denoted three points, but you could have the opportunity to earn them back in the morning live streams, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we'll go through kind of the, the tokenomics really, really quickly, and then I'm going to round out this, this classroom, um, or at least the recording part of this classroom. We can talk and chat about everything and go a little bit more in depth if you guys want to. This is the token vesting for Lit Labs. So it's brand new not many coins in circulation and they're going to rapidly hit that two and a half three million or three billion coins in circulation over the next five years most of the dilution is going to come during this bull market you again just have to hope that the coin is adopted quicker than the coins can be issued into circulation and at a 10 million dollar market cap there's a good chance that that will happen. You can even look, a lot of them are locked up and you can go through the token vesting periods, see that most of them are locked up for multiple years. One of the red flags for this one as well as Games for a Living is that a lot of the coins got sent out to the, the insiders. A lot of the team has the coins, a lot of strategic rounds, a lot of uh, KOLs and stuff. Like they literally have 65 million coins specific for KOLs which is for influencers. I'm, I'm in a couple KOL groups, and so that's literally where they're like, hey, if you promote this, we'll give you some coins, and then people just take it and promote everything. So in the, at least they're honest with it. At least they let you know, right? In summary, we have Lit Labs Gaming. We have Games for a Living. And we have Nakamoto Games. I believe that these three have been have the potential to become large players in the platforms that host a lot of these decentralized games that hopefully we see that mainstream adoption with as literally everyone in crypto is speculating we're going to see. I did not go over Gala Games because I do not like Gala Games as much as I like the potential of a newer one to come in and dethrone the previous king. I think Gala Games had the potential to win out and they fumbled the bag. Time's your most valuable asset. Hopefully this is worth investing into, and I will see you guys in the next video.